there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug, and this is my list of my worst fountain pen experiences of 2023. I'm pleased to say there are only a few this year. It could be that pens are getting better. And Leon's getting larger. That is more likely that I'm just getting smarter at not spending money on the crappy pens out there. These are also my personal experiences. Some of these pens may be okay for you, and some of the pens are okay. It's just that I had some kind of terrible issues with them. But I have a major beef with each of them. So let's take a look right now. You can view my reviews on some of these pens by clicking the links in the description below. I'm going to try to spread the Majon pens out because three of the seven pens are from Majon, unfortunately. And my first pen is the Majon V1. This isn't the Majon V1. This is a pen a friend of mine brought home with him from China for me. The reason I show this is because this pen makes more sense than the Majon V1. At least it's a nice little Chinese warrior. I don't know what this is supposed to be. I know some of you love this pen, and that's okay. You're entitled to your wrong opinion. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? But as a fountain pen, the design of the V1 fails in every respect. Well, except one. It's at least a well-made mistake. How do I hate thee? Let me count the ways. First, the cap is stupid. Don't call me stupid. Oh, right! To call you stupid would be an insult to stupid people! This long test tube makes no sense at all. A cap is supposed to seal the nib, and it doesn't. Plenty of airspace inside here and no ledge for the top of that section to seal the nib. Fail. If this cap tube is supposed to be for the visual display of the pen inside, well, it fails there too, because they didn't even allow for the nib to line up so that it's straight. Fail again. And the cap takes two and a half turns to uncap. Fail. And this clip is ridiculous. Oh, you say it's a roll stop and not a clip? Well, if so, make it something pleasant to look at, not this little fat tie from the 1930s. Fail. Once you have the pen out of its display case, there are more fails to list. The vac filler knob is a heavy chunk of metal and back weights the pen severely to the point that it is uncomfortable to write with. Fail. By the time you get down to the section of the nib, the pen has devolved from a thick pen to a skinny pen with a tiny section and an even smaller, scratchy, unpleasant Moonman number no. 5 size steel and fine nib. Moonman must be using up all of its awful, scratchy number no. 5 size nibs from the M1. Fail. Some people were saying this pen was fun. Not at $36 US, it isn't fun. Fail. I'd rather sit in the dark with a pencil in my eye. But Professor Doug, it must have some redeeming features. Okay, uh, let's see. Well, yeah, it holds 2.3 milliliters of ink. That's a lot of ink for a vac filler. Pass. Of course, that means you'd have to write with this FPLO, or fountain pen-like object of manual torture for a long time before running out of ink and putting it in the junk drawer. Fail. So let's tally up that score, shall we? Nine fails, one pass. So one out of ten. Go back of the line. Get out of the line! Get out! Go over there and think! The Oaso Retractable. I was sent two of these retractable pens to review and gave them both away on my channel. The shipping was twice what the pens were worth, and I hope those viewers that won the pens forgive me. The Oaso K016 retractable pen sells for around $12, but I don't think it's worth more than a couple of bucks. The Oaso pushes the tiny extra fine nib out through a silicone membrane at the front of the pen. That doesn't seal the nib. The plastic is very cheap and poorly molded. There are divots on the section that force your fingers into a specific writing position, and I found that position uncomfortable. The clip is stiff and unusable. But the nib was pretty smooth for an extra fine, I must say. 
The worst feature of this pen is that the clip is in an orientation that if you could clip it in your shirt pocket, the nib is facing down and therefore a disaster waiting to happen. Give this pen a pass. I'm, I mean a fail. So pass on it. You know what I mean. The Midas Retractable. The craze for inexpensive retractables shows no signs of abating if the current plethora of clickable fountain pens on AliExpress is any indication. And here, your intrepid inquiring minds has taken another hit for the team with yet another disappointing entry. I should credit my wife for actually having to test this execrable piece of plastic. She wrote with it for a couple of weeks and found it worked, but it was boring and uncomfortable. Boring and uncomfortable is pretty much an instant fail in my books. Here are some of the other ways this FPLO fails. 1. It will not accept any kind of cartridge but the ones made for this pen because the cartridge is part of the retractable mechanism. Number 2. The clip is purely decorative and will not function at all. Number three, the finger divots on the section and the nib and the clip don't line up, so you're constantly fooled into holding the pen incorrectly. Number four, the clip is facing the wrong way, so you pocket the pen with the nib down, inviting ink leaks. Number five, the fragile plastic trapdoor mechanism has no seal, leaving the nib to dry out, and that trapdoor is bound to break eventually. Number six, it's priced at $15 US when even $2 would be too much for this pen. So just don't buy this pen. Enough said? Enough said? The Magon S7. I don't have this pen anymore so I'll just run my review comments here so you won't have to go click the link and watch the entire review. Believe me, it isn't worth the time. But the nib is a serious drawback. It isn't pleasant to write with at all even after as much tuning as I care to do on it. The good news is these number five size nibs are abundantly available, but this Model S7 is not. I'm at a loss to explain why the pen has disappeared from the market, and the potential for cross-threading this cap is also an issue. It's happened to me three or four times just while filming this review. Overall, this is a very interesting offering from Magon. Perhaps we'll see another similar to this, and we might discover why this model seems to have vanished. The Hush eyedropper. I haven't actually reviewed this inexpensive eyedropper yet, but it doesn't deserve a full-blown review, so I'll review it right now. Hello, welcome to Inquiring Minds and another shorty fountain pen review. This one is going to be super fast because I dislike everything about this pen, and the more I talk about it, the more I feel my life ebbing away. So here is the very skinny on this POS, sorry, Hush eyedropper fountain pen. Don't buy it. Get out. Don't waste 15 bucks. This pen shouldn't even be two bucks with free shipping. I'll quickly show you the multiple fails on this pen. The cap takes three, count them, three full turns to unscrew. The cap doesn't post past this stupid blind cap ring. The injection molded barrel isn't a complete unit and this stupid blind cap unscrews when it's full of ink. I'm just showing water here because I'm not interested in wasting ink or skin on this pen. What kind of fountain pen idiot sells an eyedropper with a threaded blind cap at the bottom of the barrel? You, you imbecile, you bloated idiot, you stupid fathead, you... <laughs> and the nib unit unscrews, but once I unscrewed it, it fell apart. As you can see, there's the rest of it falling apart. There is an O-ring there, but this little collar on the top of the nib unit just broke apart in my hands. The number five size steel nib is laser etched hush, but is a generic Chinese steel nib that is both sprung and misaligned. Again, I'm not interested in investing any more of my time on this planet on this POS. And finally, this injection molded piece of cheap trash probably costs less than a buck to manufacture, and they have the nerve to sell it for 15 bucks US. Do yourself a favor and buy a Jinhao 82 instead for three bucks. You can get three of them for the price of this one piece of crap. And I'd trust the Jinhao to eyedropper better than this one, even though the Jinhao 82 isn't an eyedropper pen. The Parker Jotter. I bought this Parker Jotter ballpoint and fountain pen set mainly for the nib on the Jotter fountain pen. I had heard that the Magon TI500 titanium piston filler has a compatible nib to the jotter 
and the nib on the TI-500 was horribly awful, so I used this pen to steal the nib. That is the only thing that was good on this Parker Jotter fountain pen. Everything else is awful. But the worst thing about this Parker Jotter, other than the ridiculous price tag of $30 US, is that it is a depressing reminder of what has happened to one of the most famous and arguably best makers of fountain pens in history, the Parker Pen Company. You may argue with me and say, yes, well, this particular model is made in China. And that argument is just a plain cop-out. Because even though Parker is currently owned by the Newell Brands Corporation and is based in France, the Chinese factories that produce this horrible excuse for a fountain pen only did so based on the specifications and oversight of that Western-based company. We have seen, and I have shown here on my channel, that Chinese fountain pen companies like Hongdian, Jinhao, and Mahjong are quite capable of making top-quality fountain pens that rival their Western counterparts at fractions of the price. So yes, this pen was made in China, but the design, specifications, and quality control are all the fault of a once proud fountain pen manufacturer. I'm embarrassed for the legacy of Parker. George Parker would be horrified by this monstrosity. Everything about this pen screams cheap. This is supposed to be brushed steel, but it's so light that I'm pretty sure it's extruded aluminum, and it's probably made out of recycled pop cans. Not that there's anything wrong with recycling. Every edge of this pen is sharp, making it feel like a cheese grater in the hand. They make these so fast they have no time to ease that cap edge or that barrel edge off so that it isn't sharp. The soft injection molded plastic section is very slim and after only a few months is already showing signs of deformation. It says France on the back of the cap, but that's just disingenuous as the packaging was clearly marked made in China. And what about the Parker Jotter ballpoint, you might ask? Well, folks, they don't make them like they used to. Here's a Parker Jotter from 1954, piece of Chinese crap. And finally, the Majon TI-500 Titanium. This pen shouldn't really be on my list, as I love this fountain pen and continue to use it all the time. But it has been a source of some huge frustrations for me. I mentioned earlier that I bought a Parker Jotter just to steal the nib and replace the terrible nib that was on this titanium pen. It took me hours to disassemble this pen, get the nib out, and replace it with the much smoother and wetter Parker nib, and then get the pen back together again. You can watch me perform this surgery on this pen by clicking right up here. Majon has not provided any tools for the disassembly of this pen. They made a tool for getting the TI-200 titanium apart, but nothing for the TI-500. The piston mechanism was inaccessible using any of the piston tools until I bought this one from Asvine. It didn't fit the TI-500 right away, but it was close enough that I was able to grind it thinner and open the box end here with my Dremel tool and make it work. So I can now remove the piston and clean this pen properly. Removing this hood is an operation that I don't want to repeat. So in the end, I have a love-hate relationship with this pen. I love the design, balance, weight, how it posts, and how much ink it holds. And I love the overall look. I have owned a Lamy 2000 and I sold it because I never really warmed up to it. This TI-500 Titanium has a similar look and feel to the Lamy 2000 stainless steel, with the Lamy being 6 grams heavier. Perhaps Lamy's legal department had a word with Majon, because shortly after the TI-500 was on the market, it disappeared and they can no longer be found. This is now a rare pen that I love using. And it's on my worst pens of 2023 list because one, the nib was horrible. Number two, it took me hours to get it apart and replace the nib. Three, Majon provided no tools with which to disassemble this pen. And four, Majon withdrew it from the market. At $75 US, it certainly wasn't the most inexpensive Chinese fountain pen, but I think it was worth it. It has taken me over a year to get it to the point where I can use it regularly. Now that it has a Parker nib and I've got a tool to take the piston out for cleaning, it's a great writer. I can't warn you against buying this pen because, well, you can't get it anymore. And there you have it. Doug takes one, well, Doug takes seven for the Ink Acquiring Minds team yet again. Thanks for watching. I made this.